Another guy replies to that. He goes, yeah, he should call himself the informative fisherman. And I'm like, that is the biggest oxymoron you can use because all fishermen try to hide. The reason why bass fishing is my primary thing, it's Mother Nature's chess game. I want you to understand that the funnest time in bass fishing is learning. You can simply cast out there, take a sip of the beer, reel it in, cast to a new spot, take a sip of the beer, and you will catch bass. If you actually understand the dynamic of what's taking place beneath your feet, it opens up a whole new world for you. I just love doing comedy and I love teaching people, man. I want, I want people to learn and get out there with their kids, have fun. I want people to have success out there. What's up, guys? Nick here. Some people know me as the Informative Fisherman. You're listening to The Wild Initiative. This is a really cool podcast. My band's always talking about hunting, and he said, yeah, I love fishing, too, and I got to have you on. I love joking, talking about fishing, so let's do it. Put down your latte and pull on your boots. I would rest at peace for eternity if my legacy was that I made a positive influence on the non-hunting public about what hunters are and what hunting is. I finally got my buck on our last real day of hunting. So a pro-hunting organization is voting against hunting. And that says anti-hunting to me. There was a year straight where I was averaging up to 200 death threats a day. And I hugged it. Like, I just wanted to hug a bear. It's proven that the average steak in a grocery store touches 50 to 100 hands and machines. And we're putting that into our body. Hey, y'all, Cable Smith, host of the Lone Star Outdoors show here. This is Adam Weatherby. And I'm Corey Jacobson with Elk 101. This is Christy Titus. Hey, folks, this is John Bear. You're listening to The Wild Initiative. All right, y'all, welcome to another episode of The Wild Initiative. I am sitting in, uh, what, uh, what kind of boat is this? This is a Hughes Craft from Boat Country. Well, I'm sitting in here at, <laughs> at the International Sportsman's Expo in a Hughes Craft from Boat Country with the informative fisherman himself. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thanks so much for <laughs> taking the time sitting down. I'm glad we were able to make it work out today. Absolutely, brother. It's kind of funny when you're sitting in a boat in the middle of a crowd <laughs> doing an interview. It may sound a little bit tinny for you guys, but this is about the quietest place we can find. It works. You know, they're, uh, they're used to... Uh, Interruptions. I think the last one we had people uh, sitting down enjoying food and some dogs joining us in the middle <laughs> well, of the that's podcast. Some obnoxious so. crunching sounds going on in the background. <laughs> what is that crunching sound? I did record one episode one time with a buddy, and we decided to record it at like a waffle breakfast joint. And so the whole time you hear us in the background munching on <laughs> the Have Waffles podcast. <laughs> that crunching sound. But so I always like to start out just with a little introduction of yourself. Tell us a little bit yeah. about you and how did you get introduced into this whole world of fishing? You know, it's kind of funny, man, that you asked that. Um, I was always really into fishing ever since as long as I can remember to be perfectly honest with you. And back before all the social media sites, we just had straight up websites and fishing forms. And a guy was on there one time and they just got low profile bait casting reels, believe it or not, on the island of Sri Lanka. <laughs> and he writes a message says, how do I use this centripetal breaking system? And if you don't know, I'll describe it to you guys who are listening. If you pop open the side, there's these little breaks on these bait casting reels or bass fishing reels, and you have to manually pop them out. So I try to write this Super elaborate explanation. I'm about as good as writer as you're probably the your dog sleeping next to you on the couch right now listening to this. <laughs> and I try to read it back, and I'm like, oh, man, this is horrible. So I ask my dad. I go over to his house, and I go, hey, let me use that little digital camera you have on your shelf. And this, we're talking 13 years ago. And they took the little 20-second video clips. Remember that? Yep, yep. And so I slap it together, and I go into Windows Movie Maker. Uh, Windows <laughs> oh, XP. You remember Windows XP? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I go on there. I slap it together, and I go on. And I remember someone showed me a funny video on YouTube. And I, I forget how long YouTube's been out, there, but there was, like, no fishing videos. All I know is I remember when, I remember when YouTube came out. And I remember looking at it. I'm like, you know, this is a cool idea. It's got videos on it. Right. I'm like, Nobody is ever going to just put up content on YouTube. Oh, like, boy, and you were right. <laughs> I will admit when I was dumb about something oh, and yeah. I was just way off. I, I remember swearing up and down. I'm like, this is great. It'll never catch on. Nobody's ever just going to put free videos up. Yep. Like, you're I, never going to find content it's, you want. It's funny, though, because I felt kind of the same way. And then I fell into it. So I make this video. I stick it up there, show it to the guy. He's like, oh, great, man. Thanks a lot. Well, three months later, he writes me an email, and he goes, hey, did you see how many views that video has? And I just go, no. So, of course, I forgot my <laughs> password. You know, like every, everybody does. They forget their password. So I go on there, and I get logged back in. And this was under my personal name, not even under the informative fisherman name. There was like 60 or 61,000 views. Jeez. And 
especially Com- back then. That's oh, yeah. crazy. Comments everywhere. Because well, because Google was looking at YouTube. So I guess being one of the very few people on there, that's kind of just how it went. So I start reading the comments. Dude's like, that was super informative. The video quality sucked. And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> man, I did it with a little digital camera. And it was funny because I'm reading the comments. The guy goes, yeah, really informative. And then another guy replies to that. And he goes, yeah, he should call himself the informative fisherman. And I'm like, that is the <laughs> biggest oxymoron you can use because all fishermen try to hide. Like, if you, if you know some secret, like, well, they're trying to hide it, man. And I'm like, you know what? I can make a career out of this. So I said, okay, guys, I'm going to do that name. So I started the YouTube channel informative fisherman and occasionally just uh, put up a how to on there. And I was always into elaborately breaking things down, looking into the science and research behind mm-hmm. these techniques. But people were asking for generalized tutorials on how to do things. Cause they were beginners. And I said, well, I'll do one or two of those a month. So I did that for a while and it started gaining a ton of notoriety. I had some big advertisers reach out and said, Hey man, how much does it cost to stick an ad in front of your video? And I'm like, uh, you want to put an ad in front of my video? <laughs> they're like, yeah. I'm like, uh, 50 bucks. And they're like, okay, put us down for two. And I'm like, oh, a few months later, how much does that cost? Uh, 250 bucks. <laughs> and like, believe it or not, man, um, like I was doing it part time here and there for a couple of years in the beginning. And then it exploded, man. And I'm going uh, full time, 11 years. I was the first full time fishing YouTuber. That's awesome. Now, I know man. you didn't know that because I, I know did you not recently know that. started watching. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, we were talking before, and to be honest, yeah, I was not familiar with you until I initially started doing some research on who's going to be speaking here. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I was scrolling down. I kind of checked out. I, I read like the little bio. I'm like, so I went and checked out. Somewhere. I'm like, this guy. I got to talk to this guy. He's fun. Yeah, you know, it's funny, man. Like I was always like, I always want to get into stand up comedy, right? But then I'm like, eh. I don't, I'm not, I'm not the best joke deliver guy, but I like, I like to screw with my guests <laughs> and it, my father's the videographer of my show and I can't help it, but I just start screwing around and joking. It drives my wife insane. And my dad too, he's like, are, are you going to take anything serious today? Which is funny because I built a career off teaching people, but all I do is joke around the yeah. whole time. And uh, man, I, I think it just went over really well, man. We released some huge comedies last year i think it was the number one video 2019 for fishing videos it was called tip down did you get a chance to see that one i did not see that one so if you go on facebook or youtube and type in tip down it was this extreme video and in fishing every time you hook a fish and the lure is heavy you start wanting to force your tip down to prevent that fish from jumping and having leverage and shaking the lure off its mouth. So I told my buddy one day, it's like epiphany. We're out there fishing. Boom. A little light goes off in my head. And I'm like, bro, are you down to get wet? And he's like, uh, I guess. <laughs> and I'm like, just go with this. And like, dude, it, we exaggerate it so much. I'm holding him by his ankles. His head's under the water. Then I throw him in. He <laughs> swims to the bottom of the lake and while trying to keep the fish on. Sticks the rod down in the mud. I swim down, still yelling, tip down. It, <laughs> and it just exploded, man. On my, on my Facebook, in like three months, it was just under a million views. Um, it was shared everywhere. It was crazy. And we were just screwing around and having fun. And I just love doing comedy and I love teaching people, man. I want, I want people to learn and get out there with their kids, have fun. I want people to have success out there. It's so much fun enjoying the fruits of what mother nature has to offer, man. And it's, it's everywhere. It doesn't matter where you go in the world. You can go in a dirty pond behind Walmart and catch a bass, a catfish or a carp. You can go to the most exotic places and you can go do it and just, just fishing in general, just be able to throw a lure or soak a piece of bait out there and have something pounded on the other end. It's like winning the lottery, man. I'll tell you one of the best times I ever had fishing was down in Arizona with some buddies. We hit up just an old cattle pound, cattle pond full of carp, and Sweet. we just sat there, uh, jack pole in with hot dog, with slices <laughs> of hot dog, had a basket full of beers. We didn't even have a cooler with us. We were oh, like, perfect. We were like, ah, oh, crap, we forgot the cooler. Ah, it'll they'll stay cold long enough. You better title this one Hot Beer and Carp Fishing. <laughs> hot Beer and Carp Fishing. <laughs> Woo, everybody's favorite thing. Woo, howdy. Oh, yeah. But I mean, that was one of the best times I've ever had fishing because you're sitting there. There's zero thought put into it. You're oh, literally yeah. just hooking on a hot dog, dropping it in, and by the by the time you get your beer to your mouth, something's pulling on that's it. Still fun, man. <laughs> it's still so much fun. fun. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're in it for, man. Oh, the fun. Yeah. So what's uh, what's the? I mean, I'm. You're not allowed to say all of them. 
that's the cop out. But what's the uh, what's the the preferred type of fishing? If you, so, you had to do one thing, one for the rest I of your life. I consider myself a uh, a much more of a scientific angler. I'm all about the broad science of Mother Nature and the dynamics she involved, uh, which changes the way a bass thinks. So in regards to bass, there's largemouth, spotted bass, smallmouth bass. Um, those are your primary bass, but largemouth bass is the most popular one, no matter where you go around the country. Everybody's fishing for largemouth bass. So I do tons of research, different techniques, different scientists, uh, different science aspects from it, from looking at the way uh, barometric pressure affects it, ultraviolet. I did a huge study on UVA light and the way fish see at certain depths in dirty mm. water and the way the, I believe it's called Udean or Udean protein, which fish have in their eyes, which actually sees the reflection of ultraviolet from the slime coat of other fish. I've heard about that. Uh -huh. Like, that's one of those weird things you like randomly pick up from like a Facebook video right, or something. Right. And I've heard about that. Well, the, the crazy part about this, you know, those swordfish that they catch down in a thousand plus feet, like they still have eyes and they're like, there is zero light down there, mm -hmm. but they've figured out that they're ultraviolet hunters and they actually don't see what the other fish looks like. It actually looks like a disco ball to them. Huh. And it's funny because when you look at the UVA spectrum and our colors, you see, you hear about UV colors and all this and that, but white is the only actual color that we can see that reflects UVA light. And UVA is the same one that burns our skin. You know, if you go out and the UVA is less than four, you're not going to get a sunburn. You may get a decent tan, but once you start getting five, six, seven, you're going to get that sunburn easier and it's going to happen in a faster time frame. One day I forgot to put on sunblock. I was out in a UV 11 and oh. I almost vomited. When yeah. I got home, it was it was horrible. I felt like I climbed out of a microwave. Uh, I was about the worst thing. So that's it for me. You know, it's a uh, I do a lot of basic outline, like how to bass fish, how to sturgeon fish, how to fish bass in the winter. What fishing mistakes are you making? And I do a lot of that general um, tutorial style aspect for YouTube and Facebook and Instagram with the informative fisherman branding. And that's kind of funny how the name came about, but I, yeah, I took it on and I embraced it, man. Most people call me if, like when you, we walk around the show, you, you'll hear, you. Hey, if, you know, they just abbreviate it. Yeah. But for me, man, it's, uh, I just love doing it. I love hearing the feedback. I love hearing that someone went out who has been struggling to catch them or, or took their son or their daughter out and caught them. And I, I know I changed the direction of a, a person's life. You know, being able to appreciate the outdoors this is something that we've had forever. You know, and this is something a fish is going to be there. He, he doesn't change with time. The fish is not playing on his tablet, you know, that evening. He's still out there doing the same thing they did hundreds of years ago. And in the way that species behaves due to the time of year, due to the wind, due to the moon phase, due to the sun phase, you know, doing uh, from runoff from the rains, like they're so intricate. And the reason why bass fishing is my primary thing it's Mother Nature's chess game. And bass fishing is the biggest enigma. You can go out in the first two hours, figure it out. You can start developing these puzzle pieces like I know the moon phase, I knew this, I know this pattern, the fish should be here. And you'll start assembling a puzzle that's 50% full. And as you start to look at that bigger picture, you kind of know where the next piece falls into place. Well, all of a sudden, a front moves in and it starts raining. Rip your puzzle apart. And start to put it back together. <laughs> and, and that's what bass fishing is. It's not that they're the hardest fighting fish. It's not that they're the biggest fish. It's that they are everywhere and they are moody, moody creatures. <laughs> you know, and you, you look at bass fishing, you're like, dude, there's 10,000 plus lures out there. Lures, I tell people, lures are a tool to get bass to react. Lures are to look like what the bass wants to eat. And then you have lures that'll force them to instinctually react. Instinctually react is the way the behavior of the lure makes erratic movement to where they're like wounded fish and they grab it. Um, natural reaction is like if I go to throw a tennis ball at your face, you're going to reach up and slap it away. So there's lures that are very fast that will trigger them to react and smack it because they don't have hands. A bass with hands would be pretty entertaining <laughs> looking, though. And then you have natural when bass are willing to feed. You know, just like us, we have, you know, three meals a day. And bass, he could eat a big meal once a day. So if you take 100 bass and you stick them all in one pond, the chances are fishing all day, sun up to sun down, is 30% at best. You might get a shot at 30% of the population hmm. if they're all willing to feed breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's, it's a game of calculated decisions according onto the puzzle according to the puzzle pieces that you can acquire with fishing knowledge so 
I love it. It's the most scientific game that Mother Nature has to offer, in my opinion. So for someone that's just getting into fishing, would you recommend bass fishing or? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. The better you get at bass fishing, the more it applies to all fishing. Um, a lot of fish, there is some very intricate species like steelhead, uh, rainbow trout and lakes can be a little bit tricky too. Uh, but day in and day out, there's a much smaller list of lures that'll work consistently. With bass fishing, there's much more literature on the subject. And believe it or not, a lot of that transitions over. Bass are just a predator. You have other species that are scavengers, like your catfish, then you have trout, which are scavengers slash predator. And the bigger the trout, the more of a predator he becomes. So the content that you're going to read about for bass fishing applies to predators uh, for the most part not all but striped bass pike musky big trout um, a lot of that applies and you'll be amazed on how well it carries over i see guys from the bass fishing world that come out and they go to like musky fish or a uh, big rainbow trout fish and they're like i don't know how to catch these things the next <laughs> thing you know they're smacking them so and it's just about having the knowledge and for me i don't preach like oh you have to use this lure this time of year i don't want you to know that i want you to know how the bass is behaving that time of year what type what's the water temperature that he's behaving like so i teach that and now your brain will formulate that calculated calculated decision of what lure to pick instead of me saying just use this this time of year because it puts too much hope and guesswork and you're digging through notes and if you actually understand the dynamic of what's taking place beneath, beneath your feet it opens up a whole new world for you so say somebody like me, you know, I grew up, like we were talking earlier, I grew up fishing the same lake, same rock for rainbow trout the whole time in my life. I know exactly how to, the size of hook to put on that, exactly how much <laughs> weight, exactly how long of a leader to get up above the grass, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, exactly the two colors of power bait that they're most likely <laughs> <laughs> hit on. Yeah. I'm not sure I've ever caught any, a single trout on a lure uh, in that lake, but... Um, you know, so I have a general idea of fishing. I know how a rod and reel works, sure. you know, a spin rod. I, you know, I've, I've tried it a few other times, a few other places. I know the concept of how to work a lure. But say, like, I, I want to start getting into bass fishing. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that sounds awesome. Absolutely. Like, where do I go from here? So, now, what you just heard me talk about sounds very complicated. And it can be as complicated as you want or as easy as you want. You know what a Senko is? I have you know no a Senko? idea. A Senko is about a five-inch thing that looks like a chopstick, but it comes in different colors. And it's about three times as fat as a chopstick. Okay. It's a straight plastic worm, okay? A bunch of different companies make them. They're just a straight worm. Soft plastic, five-inch piece of worm that looks like a fat chopstick. <laughs> you can take a, a size hook from four uh, to two, to one, to one aught, to two aught. That's that's the spectrum right there. There's a one aught and there's a one, and from the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it gets smaller, and then you go one aught, two aught, three aught. Those are getting bigger. So there's that one, and there's two sides of the fence. Okay. So that two aught through um, down to one and back up to size four. You can take that hook with that straight worm in the middle. You could stick it right through the middle of that worm to where it's dangling on there. Just like right hook right in the middle of the worm. It's the ugliest <laughs> looking thing. It's called a wacky rig. Okay, that's what we're calling it. We're sticking the hook right through the middle of the worm. The hook point's sticking right out. For those of you listening right now, it's just how you imagine it. Stick out your index finger, stick the hook through the bottom of your knuckle and out the top. That is a wacky rig. Use anywhere from six pound test line to 15 pound test line on any rod you own and go cast that around any little grass line or little lily pads on any lake or around any boulder that rig works year round and that thing catches a ton of fish that is the wacky rig that is about the easiest rig you can use in all of bass <laughs> fishing and it's good there is days where I will go out and some beginner will throw the wacky rig and they will start out fishing me. <laughs> but that doesn't mean it's going to catch the biggest yeah. and the most every day. But it is literally the easiest bass fishing rig to get started with. And from there, you know, you can get much more into it. If you YouTube well, so search. With a, with mm -hmm. a wacky rig really yeah. quick, with something like that, is that just a, a, a drop in weight kind of rig? Cast it or out and let you, it fall. 
Um, so you're not using that like as a lure. You're not doing weird stuff you with can it. Shake you're kinda... it. You can shake it, and it'll twitch up and down just like your finger folding in half. If your index mm -hmm. finger's reaching, touching your palm, like every time you shake it, that worm's going to fold kinda... in half and kind of do a little twitchy thing, like something falling out of a tree, twitching as it falls to the bottom. But you can simply cast out there, take a sip of a beer, shake it, Take a sip of the beer, reel it in, cast to a new spot, take a sip of the beer, and you will catch bass. <laughs> I'm not sounds playing, like man. my fishing trip right there. I am not there. playing, man. It is that simple, brother. I am telling you. And, yes, as, as simple as you want to do in bass fishing, that's it. That's it. If you're just getting into it, go out and have fun. Don't complicate it on yourself whatsoever. Go out. Do the wacky rig. Now, if you really like doing that and you had some fun doing that, YouTube search beginner bass fishing informative fisherman i have like a one hour tutorial that teaches you all the beginner stuff i should have charged 500 bucks for the thing <laughs> but i want people to learn man yeah and it'll show you that wacky rig okay it'll show you two other rigs and it'll show you some different ways to look for them in lakes look for them in rivers and some time of year stuff and what you should try doing and then go from there it's a fun fun world to be in guys it is i'm telling you this is not for the physically fit <laughs> um, I, got, I got a big belly. I'm a tall, lanky dude with a big belly and a fat neck. Um, my wife, I'm sure, would appreciate me becoming more physically fit. But this is a psychological, this is a mental game. <laughs> this is just an advanced chess game with Mother Nature. That's all it is, man. And the more puzzle pieces you acquire, the easier it becomes. And, and that's the reality. I can go out there and, uh, you know, every now and then you get lucky and someone catches a, a real big one. But the bigger the lure you use, there's fewer fish in the lake that'll eat that, but it appeals to the bigger fish. You know, you look at you and I right here. I'm 6'6". Six, six. How, how tall are you? 6'7". Uh, six even. 6'7". Six even. So I probably am going to eat a little bit more than you or a bigger <laughs> meal than you. To where if you put up a regular whopper and a double whopper, and you put them 20 feet away from us, I may not go for that regular Whopper. You might mm -hmm. because you're a little bit smaller than me, but my fat butt <laughs> is going to go for that double Whopper. So you see what I'm saying? If you're going around the lake casting the double Whopper, there's a lot more of you and smaller than there is me. But if you want to catch me, you may need to appeal to me with that double Whopper. Get what I'm saying there? Mm -hmm. And that's just a general analogy of the science of what's taking place in that water. And that goes for a lot of species. You know, a bass is not going to be big and fat if he's on a treadmill all day. If you hand a bass a french fry every 30 minutes, do this. I'm on a treadmill. All right, you're looking at me. I'm jogging on the treadmill. You're like, what are we doing in your room on your treadmill? I'm just going to turn on Discovery Channel. I'm up there jogging. You hand me a french fry every 30 minutes. Am I still losing weight or am I putting on weight? Yeah, it depends on how fast you're running, but effectively yeah. you're, you're breaking even probably. Okay, this man knows. I just wanted a simple <laughs> answer here. I just wanted you to say, yeah, you're still losing weight. Okay, but now, now I get to sit there and you hand me a french fry every 30 minutes. I'm going to get fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I'm running on there and you're handing me a double whopper every 30 minutes, I'm still getting <laughs> fat. <laughs> you're you're hard, <laughs> working that thing up in about 10 minutes. And I'm, I'm puking. And the place is a total mess. We just got to get out of there now. It smells bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we in your room running in the first yeah, place? I told you, don't make this weird. <laughs> <laughs> now Ooh. you're just making it weird, bro. I was just—I was creating a scenario. Where's the nearest door in this boat? Um, <laughs> oh, I'm glad it's not on the water. No. Yeah, man. But you know, it's—it's it's that right there. A, a lot of people don't think about that. That if a big bass has to travel for a small meal frequently, sure, if it lands in his lap. And I'm gonna—I'm gonna give you another analogy right here. After Thanksgiving dinner, you're stuffed, man. You want to mm -hmm. take a nap. You're laying on the couch with your girlfriend, your wife. She goes, "Hey, we got pumpkin. Uh, we got apple pie." And you're like, I don't know. Well, I'm going to melt some vanilla ice cream on top. And she hands it to you. You eat the whole mm -hmm. bowl. Mm -hmm. I can't help it. I eat the whole bowl and I feel sick. Okay. That's because it landed in my lap. But you've already located me. You knew I was on the couch. Mm -hmm. So now you've seen that big bass. You've seen him miss a big top water lure. Or you threw a giant bait and you felt him hit it. Well, now you know that bass lives there. When if, Let's say it was January like now or February. It doesn't. Yeah, whenever. Mm-hmm. They bit it. You know what time of day they bit it. You know where they bit it. And guess who has a new giant bass spot? <laughs> you do because you're willing to try something big. And another time in the wintertime, the bass all school up to where if you use a tiny lure, it appeals to more bass. But if I catch a tiny one, 
I'll pull out a big lure and throw it there because I may have, the big one may have not, it may have not have landed in the big one's lap. He could have been 10 foot over mm -hmm. next to the smaller ones he was schooled up with. I throw that giant double whopper out there, that T-bone steak. Big mama's like, oh, hello, <laughs> and cruises over and eats that. And, and this is just, it seems like common sense, but this is just broad fishing knowledge. And, and this is generalized science. You know, these, these fish aren't reading books. They're not studying us. They have a small brain. And we got to use as much scientific research as out there. And this applies to so much of fishing. And, and I think a lot of the literature out there is telling you this lure for this time of year, this lure for this condition. And, yes, that applies. But I would much rather the viewer know why. Mm -hmm. Well, know? if you go in a little bit deeper and – yeah, okay, you know, this lure for this time of year, generally that will work. But if you know the reason that lure works for that time of uh -huh. year, when when the situation changes uh -huh. slightly, you can, call you the can then adjust, and you can call that audible. Uh-huh, absolutely. See, I got it. My message came across <laughs> loud and clear. I'm getting it. I'm, I'm, right, reading like what you're, I'm reading what you're putting out here. You smelling what I'm cooking over there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that cooking? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't we're know we're downwind of the food booth, food booths right here too, guys. Oh man, there, there's some. Uh -huh. I, I, the only time I ever eat hot dogs is when I come to the, come to these things. Dude, I was gonna wait in the hot dog line, but there was like 500 freaking people, so I went to the Thai food booth. My wife's from Southeast Asia. She's uh, Lao. Okay, so I know my Thai food, and I go over there, and they're like orange chicken. I'm like, man, that is Chinese food. And the guy's like, yeah, man, but don't tell nobody. I'm like, it's not a secret, bro. It's not a secret. And then he's like, you want that? I'm like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it so, doesn't mean I don't like orange chicken. So Come I, on, I eat just... the Thai orange chicken. <laughs> it's all batter, too. It's, it's totally Chinese food, man, but it was good. It was good. I'm not complaining. Oh, man. Now I'm hungry again. Well, yeah. Man, let's go grab, let's man. get back to talking fish. Yeah, let's I'm go, gonna, let's I, get one of the funnel cake things, too, I, man. I do not need to go spend another $17 on lunch. On one dessert. <laughs> Um, so what are maybe – so say somebody's putting together uh, their uh, their first bass rig. You know, uh -huh. we, we've got the initial yep. – uh, what, the wacky jig, wacky rig? Wacky rig. Wacky yep. rig. Uh -huh. um, you know, they're like, okay, you know, I want to put together a more full-fledged. Maybe I want to mm -hmm. buy a new – new rod and reel what are some of the things there they so, want to consider taking into consideration you're gonna, gonna love this at. you guys are gonna think this is absolutely staged from what he just asked me i own my own rod company see my hat s-t-i-x <laughs> sticks these are six multi-purpose rods that i design in bass fishing everybody designs a rod for this that this that this that and i own probably 160 170 rods I don't use them anymore. I designed six rods to do everything, to fish every lure there is in bass fishing, all multi-purpose. Now, the reason why I did this is I travel a ton. I needed it to be convenient on me, and usually I was grabbing five or six of my favorite rods anyways. I'm not carrying 100-plus rods on a boat. That's ridiculous. So I'm like, dude, I want to design this, and one of my buddies like, dude, let's start the rod company. And I'm like, no way. And a little over two years ago now, we started Sticks Fishing, stixfishing.com. The rods are all sold out right now, so <laughs> hopefully by the time you guys are hearing this, you can go check it out for yourselves. Um, dude, we got buy them and try them. If you try them out, you don't like them, you can return them. I'll eat the shipping. Like, it's online only. I keep the cost way down, all six for 500 bucks or 100 bucks a pop. Nice. But if you are just getting started, and the question that I get all the time in my email is, what's the first bass rod I should own? And I said, well, are you comfortable with a spinning reel? Have you ever used a bait casting reel? And they're like, most people are like, oh, I've, you know, I'm just brand new to fishing. So I say, you're going to want a spinning setup. So the number two rod in our lineup is the hybrid spin. I designed that to be the most versatile spinning rod you can use for bass fishing and it goes and it fits into the full six lineup to where if you buy the number two which is that hybrid spin you're going to get used to using that and as you want to learn the other things you can fill in the blanks until you have a complete set um from there the next rex rod you should own is the number three and that's the hybrid cast that's the bait casting version and we won't talk about my bait casting experience yeah it, it might be pretty horrid it was <laughs> Every time I thought I got it, no, I didn't get it. Yeah. Well, I got a Continue. video for that, too, bro. I got, I got one for that, too. My buddy to Locke can attest, uh, can attest to how much time I yeah. actually spent fishing, fishing you know, uh, and the, during that and time. And the difference. The difference is between the two of those, you can use much heavier lures mm -hmm. on a bait caster than you can a spinning rod. You can use bigger line, heavier line to where you can pull harder. If the fish is down in a tree 
when he hooks it and he swims down in a tree in a spinning rod, you may be in trouble. Versus if he hooks it, swims down in a tree in a bait caster, you need to be able to pull him out. Mm -hmm. You got to leverage him out. So that's the bigger difference. Bait casters for your much bigger lures. And your spinning setups are for your much smaller lures. Uh, but in the wintertime, bass go deep, and you got to use those small lures, and a spinning rod's much easier to fish, man. So if you guys are listening to this in winter, get that spinning rod, get that wacky rig, get out there and work them. Go fishing this winter. Go, yeah. go bass deep. Just just be cold. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that crispiness. So then maybe talking about uh, lure selection. Yeah. If somebody, you know, they're like, okay, you know, I know I, I, I don't want to have to go buy 100 different lures for yeah, all this stuff. Absolutely. Where where do I even start? So where you're going to start is that uh, a worm like that. Um, I have no affiliation with Yamamoto. They have a 5-inch Senko. The color you want is green pumpkin. 5-inch green pumpkin Senko is the one you're going to do this wacky rig worm on. Right off the bat, that's what you're going to use. The first hard lure you want to own is a square bill crankbait, and you want to get it in a dark red color. Dark red color looks like a crawdad, and in the spring months, depending on where you live, I live in Northern California, so if you live in the South, this may be a little sooner. Could be uh, late winter for you guys that that square bill is going to work. And a square bill is a little hard plastic with a little square piece on the front of it, and it's called a crankbait, a square bill crankbait, and it wiggles and deflects off the rock. So you can cast it and reel it in to where you can move down the shoreline fast if you're bank fishing or cast it up to the shore and reel it in fast with the boat. Uh, from there, you move into summertime. Like I said, that wacky rig's going to work all summer long. But in the summertime, bass love to eat topwater. This is where you want to get yourself a soft plastic frog. And you want to throw it up on the scummiest stuff you see. Grass <laughs> sticking out of the water. Bushes sticking out of the water. It's a ton of fun. You'll catch big ones. And you have your wacky rig with you. Have that frog with you. But as summer rolls around, the grass is going to grow. The square bill's not going to work as good. But your frog and your wacky rig's going to work great. In the fall, your frog's still going to work great. The, the, uh, the wacky rig's still going to work great. But this is where you want to pick up like a spinner bait um, in a white color that look like shad. A lot of lakes, the shad start balling up in the fall, and you'll see bass splashing against the surface. What they're doing is trapping bait fish. So um, that frog loses its luster, but a little spinner bait or a little Bill Lewis rattle trap, you remember what a rattle trap is? They're mm -hmm. in every Walmart. It looks like a shiny little fish. Throw that out there. Get yourself the 3 8 ounce size. You can make a long cast on your spinning rod or your bait caster and reel it through all that commotion you see out there, and you will hammer the bass. Wintertime rolls back around. That wacky rig you have, you just have to cast and you have to be patient and let it get to the bottom. Mm -hmm. They're down there on the bottom. One other very, very simple rig you can learn in the wintertime is a Ned rig. It's a hook with a little lead head on it, and you can use any little three-inch or less plastic. You stick it on there. It's an exposed hook. Looks like a pencil eraser, a lead, little tiny hook sticking out the back of there, and you thread your little plastic on in there. N-E-D rig you guys can youtube any of that stuff very easy for you guys to go out and catch fish and get started you're gonna have an absolute blast all right so we got the rod and reel we got mm -hmm. the lures what else do we need to consider you need to consider that don't set your expectations high um <laughs> and no no i mean this i know i, I, I really know. do mean it and if you tell yourself you're trying to get one bite and the I want you to understand that the funnest time in bass fishing is learning. I've done it my whole life. Now, when I don't do very well, I'm like, nah. And a lot of people are like, man, I wish I had a day like that. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Uh, man, I, I had fun. I was out there fishing. I still caught them. I didn't produce to my standards. But, you know, that's, that's how it went. You know, and that was the day I was given. Maybe everybody struggled that day to catch them. So the harder it is, the more you will learn. Pay attention. Relax. Just stay comfortable. Don't have huge expectations. Just tell yourself you're going to go enjoy it outside. And, and if one of these bats bite your lure, hey, man, you know, when you catch it, <laughs> pull out your phone, take a picture. Uh, don't keep it out of the water too long. Toss her back in because those bass get us paid. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us fishermen make money off catching big bass. And if you want to eat bass, try not to eat anything over three pounds, please. Because <laughs> the three pounders generally are going into the live well and they get us checks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I love I love that you said that because uh, one of the things you know, if anybody uh, anybody that's been listening to my podcast for a while knows, one of the mm -hmm. big things I talk about in a lot of the episodes mm -hmm. is is 
your measures of success when you go out. Yeah. Like with hunting, you know, mm-hmm. if you go out your very first time hunting with a bow and you expect to get a Boone and Crockett level giant bull elk. And I don't even know what that probably, is. That's <laughs> it's like the it kind of one of the pinnacle. Thing, okay, you know, it's it. like the, I, I the biggest like, yeah. big old bull elk out there. You're going to be pretty sorely disappointed. However, if you go out and you're like, you know what? I just want to have an encounter. I just want to call a bull in or whatever that right. is. That's kind of the equivalent of just – I just want to get a bite. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah. and you – if that's a successful trip, then anything past that yeah. is, is Unre- just icing yeah. on the cake. Have realistic standards because you don't develop expectations and you'll actually be more focused having realistic standards. That's so true, man. And I, I know you told me that you were into shoot and release hunting, which is really cool because I'm into catch and release. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bro. I'm like, like, he's like, I never said that. I was waiting. I was waiting for the pun. I'm yeah. like, okay, don't mouth yeah, off. Don't man, mouth. It's great. You just shoot it with the arrow. You take the arrow out. You put a Band-Aid on the sucker. He goes about his business. I don't know. I know some people that I'm pretty sure that's how they hunt. But uh... <laughs> I think if you can pull it out and they run off, uh, chances are you weren't getting to that arrow to begin with. <laughs> man, they ran off. I don't the tray i'm like oh come on <laughs> um we here we're again we got a long four days ahead of us now yeah you better go find that animal <laughs> yeah <laughs> you shoot it you better There's eat that thing that's all i gotta say my father raised me that way man yep. i remember i shot a a dove out in our backyard with my bb gun growing up my dad goes you ready to clean it need it i'm like no Whoa. and he's like yeah, i don't care what you shoot we're eating it out here if you want to shoot it and kill it we're taking that animal you know and I'm like, okay, you know, and that built it into me. And I remember our dog was getting old, and he uh, he's like, okay, you got to shoot the dog. And then we ate the dog. I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. You were looking at me so serious. It, was, it took a second. <laughs> the funny thing is it, like, took a second to process what you were You're saying. Like, like no, I heard he it. No, he I didn't. heard it in my mind, and then I'm like – and then by, yeah. <laughs> by the time I realized you're messing with me, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> See, my delivery was, was still, good, though. Delivery I was, was still, I was still back on the, the dove for a second. Wait, I was wait, like, I'm a little dove. slow. Then he shot. Why? Wait, they ate wait, the what? dog? I, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I good, know some people. He was a good dog, and he was a good tasting dog. <laughs> I mean, I'm also, I, I also have friend. Uh, no, I never shot my dog. We're just going to uh, clarify that. And, I mean, I do have a good friend that has a great bobcat coyote. Uh, barbacoa recipe so i mean it's effectively barbacoa. it's effectively a cat and dog barbacoa recipe sounds delicious to me man to be honest i've i've made that with some some very tough very strange varieties of game <laughs> and that is one of it is one of my favorite recipes of all time yeah i'm down to try it man you let me know <laughs> i'll give you a call <laughs> uh, so if folks wanted to uh follow along with all the shenanigans where yeah. are they gonna find you online um youtube facebook instagram i actually just made a tiktok my oldest daughter and my wife said dad you need a tiktok which is funny i it's very it seems kidding i'm to still me, trying to figure it out no, it's actually pretty cool i've man. heard it um, is yeah so informative fisherman on any of those platforms informative fisherman.com that's I-N-F-O-R-M-A-T-I-V-E, Fisherman. Uh, M-A-N, not M-E-N, at Fisherman. <laughs> I know a lot of people get that confused, and that's a .com. <laughs> And that'll take you back to all my social media platforms. Fantastic. Guy. Um, um, anytime I post something, I generally answer all the comments within the first 24 hours. After that, it gets a little bit overly <laughs> consuming. So don't think that I was being negative. Um, I do read all the comments. So after that, if you want to say something, I appreciated it. If it's if it's something very interesting, I will make it a point to answer if I think other people can gain from it. And uh, I'm really young, sorry about that one comment, by yeah, the way. Yeah, don't I, sweat it, man. It's no big deal. <laughs> he'll, he'll be all right. We're pretending on that one, too, guys. That was also a joke. We're going to put that one out there. As no, man, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So if maybe uh – you know, maybe you ran into someone that just kind of happened to be che- checking out this expo, or yeah, maybe yeah. somebody randomly came across a video of yours and uh-huh. they they reached out. They're talking to you. They're like, "Hey, man, you know, all this fishing stuff sounds really cool, yeah, but yeah. there's, you know, I know you kind of talked about how to get started, whatever, but there's just that's just too much. I have no background, no history in this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's in- too intimidating for me. What mm-hmm. what kind of words of wisdom or encouragement would you give that person to kind of get them over that hump? That. It's not the most complicated everything out there. You're just going to go take a walk. You're going to go take a walk the side of the lake. You're going to go enjoy Mother Nature. And you're just going to make some cast. It doesn't matter if you get bit or not. Just going out there and casting is gratifying. Uh, there's, if, if, I don't know where you're listening to this right now, guys, but I've been all over this country. Any lake you get out to, any pond, any creek disconnects you 
from the mundane stresses of life and just allow yourself to listen to the birds, listen to the water, listen to the wind. It's amazing. Mother nature is an incredible thing. And, you know, we're, we're natural. And this is, we're just a complicated animal. Take away the stresses of work, take away all that. And just go out there and enjoy yourself, man. That's really what it's all about. Don't, you don't, you don't need to be the next superstar fisherman. If you want to great, but you don't need to just enjoy yourself. That's what it's all about, man. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you sitting down, taking the time uh, out of a pretty busy Saturday at the oh, Expo. I'm enjoying so. this. I get to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was going to say, you're not, you're not standing and selling at the moment. Yes, so it nice feels little, good. feels really good. Nice little break. But I appreciate you taking the time and hopping on. Absolutely, brother. And I greatly appreciate all your listeners tuning into this, man. Uh, it's really cool for the people who listen to the podcast. And uh, this guy seems to be a great dude. This is, this is going to be the first podcast of his I'm going to hear. Hopefully, maybe I get this guy to take me out uh, hunting, and then it could be an extra embarrassing oh, video for people to watch. There we could do. There we could. That's <laughs> something we could definitely do. But. Uh, thanks for having me on, brother. Greatly appreciate it, man. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, y'all. That'll do it for another episode of The Wild Initiative. Make sure you check out the show notes page at thewildinitiative.com. Get links to everything we talked about in today's episode. Had a lot of fun. This will do it for this week. But until next time, I hope this episode inspired you to get involved, get outdoors, and plan your initiative for the wild. Thank you for listening to The Wild Initiative. Please take a moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes or Stitcher and head on over to thewildinitiative.com to get show notes, check out the blog, gear discounts, other podcasts from the Wild Initiative family, and more. 